Augustine is citing the Old Testament when he justifies persecuting heretics. So let me so notice he'd have to you he, he would have to go to the Old Testament, right? He can't just yeah the can't Bible. Just Jesus. The Bible. He can't just Christians Jesus, believe right? in the Bible. Christians actually take their guidance from the entirety of the Bible. No one has this interpretation that you have that everything in the Old Testament is irrelevant. Don't even look at it. No Never one has this that. interpretation. Never said that. We see when violence starts, it's when you get this Roman Christian hybrid. Augustine We're is not talking about Augustine here. Theodosius is citing it. Constantine is citing it. All of these other Christians throughout history are citing the Old Testament to justify expansionist war. If you take Jesus's example of not lifting the sword, don't defend yourself against violence. Turn the other cheek. These aren't rules that you can extrapolate and make rules for an entire Christian nation. Um, otherwise, Christianity would have been wiped out within, you know, the first few centuries. Um, that's the main point that I'm trying to make. But you just keep referring to, okay, well, Jesus didn't say this, Jesus didn't say that. Um, but those aren't rules that can be applied on a macro scale. And this seems to be a problem for your interpretation of Christianity. Other Christians throughout history did not share your interpretation. They did engage in uh, execution of blasphemers. They did execute the apostates. They Look at the Justinian. Look at the Byzantine Empire. Look at the Spanish Reconquista. They all had this interpretation uh, that is much in line with actually what we find in Islam. You're the only one, and, and Christians who follow this kind of liberalized Christianity, you're the only one who uh, does not see that. Uh, no, I'm looking at the Bible. Again, there's no indication. There's no indication. When the harshest penalty of the church is, there's the door, you're excommunicated. Um, and we see when violence starts, it's when you get this this Roman Christian hybrid, um, again, I don't see anything in Christianity that says go kill and slaughter unbelievers, go kill heretics, kill apostates, anything like that. Um, the only time you see that sort of thing arising is when it's combined with the Roman Empire. And it, the, the Roman Empire didn't start as some Christian thing that arose out of Christianity. The Roman Empire was already there and it had its own its own uh, strategies for dealing with people. And it was. You, you you crush everything that gets in your way. And then you sort of end up with some Christians who want to crush everything that gets in their way. Not what Jesus said. Not what Jesus said. So, I mean, you know, we can look back and, and try to understand them being in that situation. But uh, I mean, they didn't have that interpretation that you have. They're looking at the Old Testament. They're looking at Moses. They're looking at what Moses they're not, did. They're the not looking at any. They're not, they weren't yes, looking that's at any. What, that's what Theodosia cites. That's what he cites when he justifies killing uh, the pagans and destroying their religious temples, destroying their idols. This, these are the things that they cite. They what's cite the, the Old Testament. So, so you're saying Theodosius couldn't find anything from Jesus, and so he goes to the Old Testament. No, they covenant, looked at the entire Bible. Under. They looked at the entire Bible, and they said, look, we have Moses doing this. Jesus said that he, he is a follower of Moses and that he respects him. Did Jesus denounce Moses? Did, did Jesus say that Moses was an evil man? What's no, the, what's, he endorses Moses. What's the, what's the quote from Theodosius? I'd be, I'd be interested in, in seeing the reasoning. But uh, notice, it would be very, very strange of me to say, uh, hey, here's what I'm commanded. Jesus commanded me to love everyone, even my enemies. Uh, I'm told to live in peace with all men. Uh, I'm told to seek the good of all people. I'm told to pray for all people. I'm told to honor all people. But, you know, Moses fought the Canaanites, so therefore I'm going to go slaughter unbelievers in the name of Jesus. You really not understand how, how strange that is? I have commands Wait, that are directed say, towards me. Hmm? The, the, the commands that are directed to Moses? or I, No, I no, no. no. I said there are commands that are directed towards Christians, right? Jesus saying, um, Jesus saying that, uh, that that we have to love everyone, including our enemies. That that's directed towards how, can, how is that a of po policy that a Christian state can take? You're talking about the Christian I love state. The I love the enemies that are approaching my city and are about to Jesus genocide. doesn't. Jesus doesn't tell a state. You can't talk to a state. Jesus isn't talking to a state. He's talking well, to a, a he's Christian talking to a civilization can't exist. A Christian nation cannot exist. America. Have, many people have, consider America a Christian nation. 
And if an invading force comes, the Christians are all supposed to lie down and lay down their weapons because Jesus said, you know, don't you live by the sword, you die by the sword. I live in Texas. I think the Texans over here are not going to be very happy about this kind of interpretation that you are imposing on Jesus and saying that this is his message for a Christian nation. Actually, there is no Christian nation. There is no guidance on that level. That doesn't really make sense. You can have to a me. Nation. I don't think it makes sense to many Christians. Let me cite you Theodosian. In the Theodosian decree, it is decreed that in all places and all cities, the pagan temple should be closed at once. And after a general warning, the opportunity of sinning uh, be taken from the wicked. We decree also that we shall cease from making sacrifices and anyone who has committed such a crime, let him be stricken with the avenging sword. And we decree that the property of the one executed shall be claimed by the city and that rulers of the provinces be punished in the name in the same way if they neglect to punish such crimes, Codex Theodosianus and, and the citation. No, my, my, my question was where, where does he say he's getting this from Moses? Where is he getting it from? I mean, he's, basing it on the bible in general yeah where's no where's he well what, what i'm saying is what he just said that sounds exactly like what a roman emperor would say it, it just got combined with christianity in other words that that's a i mean the would, thing that this policy from mm -hmm. theodosius and other emperors actually makes more rational sense because it seems like they're trying to expand and grow the Christian nation. They're trying to preserve Christians from, you know, uh, falling into worshiping false idols. That seems like a reasonable policy, actually. What you're saying seems like the destruction of Christianity and making sure that Christians can't even exist past the first century. Uh, think about what you're saying, because I, I, I think things make sense in your head, but they're totally contradicted by reality. Christians were persecuted for centuries without shedding a drop of blood, and they ended up taking over the Roman Empire, right? According they to you— They took over? Hey, how, did, how did they take over, though? How did they take over? By, by, not by killing. Not, not by killing. They didn't take over the Roman Empire by killing. People just kept converting to Christianity. So that's that's what I'm pointing out. The problem is so these reasoning. converts that so apparently know so much about peace and not killing, they immediately start killing. They immediately Constantine immediately starts killing after he converts. K keep in mind what keep in mind. Con Constantine got this dream conquer by this. Now 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 the now Christianity is something you conquer for. So that was a false to, dream. He, he had he has to. I don't know. I mean, it could be a true dream, and he just misinterpreted it. I mean, yeah, I could I could say you know I'm I'm supposed to conquer by the cross. It's not that I'm going out and hacking people up over it. Uh, but, but I mean, it, it's very simple. If you're going around killing heretics, uh, killing apostates, and so on, it's very simple. You've got the commands that are directed towards Christians as the covenant that we're under. And it's simple. Jesus said, you shall love your neighbor. And, and you've heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you so that you may be, be sons of your father who is in heaven. Is that consistent with going around uh, slaughtering people over Jesus because they, uh, they're, they're following the wrong thing? When, when Jesus was before Pilate and he said, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to my Jewish enemies. As it is, my kingdom is not of this world. So if he's saying his kingdom is not of this world, and you say we have to go out and, and uh, establish this kingdom for Jesus, you got issues. And in, in, when, when Paul says, let all that you do be done in love, when he says that Christians are to walk in love, when he says, may the Lord cause you to increase and abound in love for one another and for all people, when he says, I urge that entreaties and prayers, petitions and thanksgivings be made on behalf of all men, when the author of Hebrews says that uh, we have to pursue peace with all men. When Peter says that we have to honor all people, it's just not consistent with going on a killing spree. Again, you're, you keep trying to apply that to some Christian state. These are you, you could have a state that punishes wrongdoers and so on. Um, this is this is talking about individual Christians and how we're supposed to live and how the church is supposed to uh, function in society. How can the, the church, church function if it's not like an organized body that is has the ability to coerce, you know, because excommunication is actually you say it like, oh, just there's the door walk out of it. That essentially means that you are banned from society, which is is uh, condemning people to either death or a life of complete destitution and ruin. So that is actually coercion. Excommunication isn't some you know benign thing that you keep referring to in, in the first century. 
Christians are a persecuted minority. So they get out of the church, that is, most of the world is open to. No, I'm talking about the majority of Christian history. You are cherry picking these kinds of examples. You reference ex excommunication, so I'm telling you the reality I'm, I'm, of what that is has been historically. Like, look, look, Augustine is citing just uh, citing the Old Testament when he justifies persecuting heretics. So let me so notice he'd have to he, he would have to go to the Old Testament, right? He can't just yeah the Bible, just quote Jesus. the Bible. He can't just Christians Jesus, believe right? in the Bible. Christians actually take their guidance from the entirety of the Bible. No one has this interpretation that you have that. Everything in the Old Testament is irrelevant. Don't even look at it. No Never one had this that. interpretation. Never said that. Even the even Christians who say that the New Covenant of abrogates the Old uh, Covenant and the Mosaic Law, they still took inspiration from the Bible. They still cite the Bible. This is the first yeah. time I'm hearing a Christian. You can. Every time I cite something from the Old Testament, this is Augustine. You're trying to overtalk Augustine <laughs> in your interpretation if, of, if, of uh, if Augustine, and, and the usage of the Old Testament. If Augustine throws out the words of Jesus for uh, an, another covenant, he, he's got issues. Just let me give you an example because we're. I don't. I, I don't think this is terribly difficult. But the, the Bible contains a series of covenants. So there's this. There's a covenant between God and Adam. God says, uh, you know, Adam, you do this, and, and here's what I'm going to do. Uh, there's later. There's a covenant with Noah. As a matter of fact, I'll even give you a specific example. God gives a covenant with Noah. Establishes a covenant with Noah. And as part of that covenant. There are uh, no eating restrictions. He says, you know, eat eat anything that that, that moves, anything you want to anything you want to kill and eat. Later on, there's a covenant uh, with the children of Israel, and you can read you can read the uh, the Torah over and over again. These are the rules for the children of Israel. These are the rules for the children of Israel, and under that covenant, you have all these dietary restrictions. You didn't have those under the covenant with Noah. It's a different covenant. You're talking about different covenants, but also in the Old Testament, we're told a new covenant is coming. And so the new covenant is coming. And then we have the rules that are associated with the new covenant. It would just make no sense. And you can eat. You can even see this. This is in other words, this is in the New Testament where the uh, the issue comes before the apostles in Acts 15. And it's, hey, which of these rules that are for the children of Israel actually apply to non-Jewish Christians. And they only come up with a couple of things that would have interfered with the fellowship between uh, Gentile Christians and Jewish Christians. It was, it was, hey, you know, don't eat certain things in the presence of, uh, of Jewish believers because that's going to cause division. But it never crosses their mind. Oh, we have to follow all these things. All you, all, all these new Christians have to follow all of these. I didn't say that. You're strawmanning. I didn't say that Christians believe that you have to follow everything in the Old Testament and the Mosaic Law. You're strawmanning me. If I'm you're going to follow it on big things like going Christians. around killing people, that yeah, would be kind did, of a big one. They did take that. Yeah, they did take that. They did? did take that from the Old Testament. Did Augustine, Augustine We're is not talking about Augustine here. It. Theodosius is citing it. All of the, Constantine is citing it. All of these. Other Christians throughout history are citing the Old Testament to justify expansionist war to, because they, they are looking for, as Christians, guidance on how to run uh, their state. They're trying to run society according to Christian values. You have this preposterous position that the Bible has nothing applicable to running a state. And I, about, can, I agree. You're talking about, talk about, talk about, talk about me, straw manning. I talked about how the church would influence governments and so on. But yes, if you're, if you're talking about the church based on uh, what going teaching out, of Jesus, going out and conquering, based on what teaching of Jesus did they just, just, to hear, just, uh, his, just to his kingdom to is not of this world. What's that? I was going to say, just to hear the rest from David. What's that? Well, he cut me off. So. Oh, I, mean, I, I no, agree. No, wait, I mean, it's, it's like right. roughly equal. This is where I'm like, just to be sure that it keeps going in a civil manner. I'm jumping in a little bit more now. So I'm not trying to say anybody's doing oh, it more fine. than the other. And by the, by the way, Daniel, you, you're free to, you're free to cut me off. I have no, no problems. It's a friendly discussion. Um, but it, Jesus says his kingdom is not of this world. Uh, he establishes the church. You could have a nation of Christians. You could even have a, a, a nation um, grounded in Christian principles and so on. You can do all that. That's just, you're, you're kind of on new ground because that's not what you're commanded. And, and Christians for the first three centuries of Christianity don't seem to have a concept that they're supposed to be out there taking over the world. The time when you start to get ideas like that is after, after Christianity is combined with the Roman Empire. And then you've got this Christian-Roman hybrid. And then, of course, people within that 
empire start coming up with, uh, oh, here's why we have, here's why we have to do it. Well, the, the, the only point here, there not, there's nothing in your covenant that suggests that 